me, as soon as I uh, turned the video camera on, the screen just went dark. Anyway, listen, welcome to another video. Um, as you can see there, I'm going to be taking a wee look at a Vectrex game. Now, uh, I've put out a couple of Vectrex videos in the last, probably the last four weeks, which is quite surprising for me, considering the Vectrex is probably my favourite gaming system. It's just such a unique system. So I've got a, quite a decent collection of original uh, Vectrex games, uh, including many sort of homebrew games as well. So what I thought I would do is just do a kind of, not a review, I'll just let you see uh, these games, the boxes, instructions, overlays, and then I'll finish off with a little uh, game of it. So to kick things off, we have... Da, da, da. I'm just going to hopefully zoom in. Now, I'm actually using the... Uh, manual focus on this thing which should hopefully be better wait a minute that's moving about stop moving god damn it yeah this is a uh, fortress of sorry fortress of narzod narzod sounds exactly like a word backwards what would that be does ran maybe not it's amazing the number of games that were written back in the 80s and it was literally the author's name backwards so, like, Trebor Wars would have been Robert Wars. So, Fortress of Narzord. Now, I think this is a, this is one of the slightly rarer Vectrex games. I mean, the thing is, <laughs> you can't get a cheap Vectrex game now. The Vectrex seems to be ridiculously uh, collectible. The thing about it is, the system itself, uh, you know, I can imagine it's, it's such a, a fiddly system to fix. And I'm sure over the sort of years, more and more Vectrexes are uh, are going to stop working. Now that's why I've got two, because I don't have any technical ability at all. I certainly wouldn't go opening up a Vectrex, not can, when you consider it's got one of these uh, cathode ray tube things in it, which you can touch and die instantly. So don't say I didn't warn you. So uh, yeah, that's why I've got two of these things. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I got mines, I got, I think this is, when I got my first one, I got it about, oh, I don't know when would it be, I would say probably coming up for probably 10 years ago, um, I paid £100 for it, and it came with about 10 games, and then, <clears throat> when would it be, about th three years ago, there was a, I was going down to play Blackpool, and I happened to notice somebody was selling one on uh, Gumtree for £70, including about nine games, original games. Yep, £70. <laughs> so I couldn't resist it, so I drove down to York and then headed back down to uh, to play Blackpool. Um, I did, um, possibly foolishly, sold off all my duplicate games, and I think I sold them, I think I sold them for 100 quid for like seven, eight, nine games. Now these games now go for about 30, 40 quid. I don't think it's possible to pick up a, a special box one with the inlay, uh, with the sort of, you know, the, the overlay. They're just becoming so much more collectible and with it, the price is just going up and up and up and up. Um, I mean, I've never tried to really, look, I mean, on the very odd occasion, I've tried to see about getting games that I don't have um, but they're just so damned expensive. Now, I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to put a wee piece of cardboard. I'm going to put something under the, underneath this little foot just to take it up a tad. In fact, why don't I use the actual? Right, if I move that up, well, that's a wee bit better. That's it. Yeah. So fortress of Narzod. I'm just picking these completely at random off my shelf. So, yeah, you can see the box. I need to get behind this camera so I can actually see if you can see it. Yeah, the boxes I've got are all pretty tatty, but, you know, who cares? thing is, normally I would just throw boxes in the bin, but even I'm not that stupid uh, to do that with a Vectrex game because the box is all part of it. So, yeah, you see there on the side, on the top, Fortress of Narzord, not a great deal. On the back... Oh, I thought I was going to see you get a screenshot. You don't. You've got, uh, what does it say in English there? Let me zoom in a wee bit. Oh, that's blurred. I should maybe have just left it on thing. Anyway, what does it say? 
For one or two players, long, sorry, long ago in times of magic and adventure, the evil wizard Narzod gained the power to enslave all mankind and won supremacy of the earth from the good wizards. You are the only honourable wizard left with no knowledge to harness the forces of good to destroy Narzod's sinister, sorry, sinister fortress. But he has guarded his realm against your attack with deadly creatures of darkness. Beware of the mystic hunt. Was that hunter as you approach the fortress of Narzod? It sounds very exciting. And I'll zoom out a wee bit again. So let's see inside. Now I've actually got a, I've got a multi cap, so I generally don't use the originals. Like I says, the, I mean I could probably put some cellar tape to kind of repair this. But some original collectors would completely freak out if you put cellar tape. So what have we got in the box? Let's call this the unboxing video. That's it. Right, this is the overlay. Now these alone sell for quite a bit of money. Oh look at that. A Vectrex colour. Um, yeah, it's actually in pretty good condition. I mean it's, it's scratched the buggery but you know what, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's, yeah, it's scratched, but you know what? It's intact. There's no cracks or anything. So along the bottom, you can see here. Can you see that? It says Fortress of Narzod Blast. So it appears there is only actually one button. You've got the controls, and you've got the overlay. Don't quite know what the purpose of these things were. I mean, they, obviously the cartridge went like so. It's got a few breaks in it, but you know what would you expect? And there's the cartridge itself. I mean, the cartridge, the label is in really good nick. Completely blank. On the back, got a nice quality label actually. Yeah, right. Let's take a look at the instructions. <clears throat> Fortress of Narzod. So you've got the hovercraft. You've got the Spiker Doom Grabber. That looks very reminiscent of the sort of thing in Tempest. Tarantula. Ghoul. <laughs> Ghoul. Warbird. Warbird Shield and Mystic Hurler. And the controls. Fortress of Narzod controls. Fortress of Narzod is played with a built-in control panel only. The functions of the controls are number of players. Blast activates your blaster. So I think it's obviously just a, uh, a shoot em up. Joystick moves your hovercraft forwards, backwards, or from side to side. Skill level used to select starting skill level either 1, 2, or 3. How to play player selection. Fortress of Narzod can be played either as a 1 or 2 player game. When player 1 game appears on the screen, press button 1 once to switch to a 2 player game. Player 2 game will then show on the screen. When played as a 2 player game, only the built in control panel is used and the player takes turns with the controls. You can return to a single player by pressing button 1 again before starting gameplay. Skill level selection. You can play Fortress of Narzod at skill level 1, the least difficult, level 2 or level 3, the most difficult. To select the skill level, push button 2. Once you have selected the number <coughs> of players and the skill level, press button 4 to approach the first of three roadways to the fortress. Can you see that? Okay, I think you can actually. Can you? Yeah, you can. Yeah, okay. It's not perfectly clear, but hopefully you can, you can see it. Gameplay. Your goal is successfully to travel three roadways leading to the fortress, then destroy the powerful mystic hurler who acts as guardian to Narzod himself. Once the Mystic Hurler is destroyed, the Fortress of Narzod and all the evil it contains will disintegrate before your eyes. You've got the Lower Roadway. As the game begins, you find your hovercraft at the bottom of the Lower Roadway. You have been sighted by Narzod and he immediately releases his lead guardians, the Doom Grabbers. Like all other guardians of the Fortress, they will randomly release deadly spikers which will destroy your hovercraft on contact. Contact with any of the gardens will also gardens guardians will also destroy you. Use your joystick to move your hovercraft and push button four to activate the blaster in an attempt to destroy the doom grabbers and their spikers. After destroying all the doom grabbers, you must face the tarantulas, then the ghouls. Be aware that the bullets from your blaster can ricochet off the walls of the roadway directly back into your hovercraft if you're not careful. 
If you successfully negotiate your lower roadway, you may pass will appear on the screen. Maneuver your craft through the grab tower to the next roadway. Middle roadway. On the middle roadway. <laughs> I can't even speak tonight. On the middle roadway. <laughs> road. Road. On the middle roadway. Yeah. You will face the same type of guardians. Oh, I'll move that up. We can't actually see that now. Uh, there we go. Yeah, on the middle roadway, you will face the same type of guardians, but Narzod will send them in greater numbers. You will also face two more challenges. The spikers thrown by the guardians will split in half when hit by your blaster to double the danger, and warbirds will accompany each wave of doom grabbers, tarantulas, and ghouls. It sounds quite interesting. Is there actually different? Yeah, okay, we'll read these two pages because then it goes into different languages. Is that uh, manual focus? I'll just, I'm just going to focus a wee bit, guys. There we go, that's better. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the warbirds on the middle road we can harm you only if they hit your hovercraft. However, you can also use them to your advantage by blasting them while they're over the roadway. When blasted, they will act as shields from the guardian spikers. However, they will only shield you for a short time and will eventually disappear. Upper roadway. <laughs> I can't say that word at all. I'm going to call it road. Upper road. You will again face the same type of guardians, only in greater numbers. As on the middle roadway, the guardian spikers will split in half when blasted, and you will also face the warbirds. However, the warbirds on the upper roadway... <laughs> road. <laughs> I'm going to give up with this video. <laughs> However, the warbirds on the upper roadway will fire bullets at you if they come within range of your hovercraft. You must attempt to destroy the bullets or avoid them. The fortress. If you are able to destroy all three waves of guardians on the upper roadway, roadway, you will see abandon all hope. Ye who enter here on this screen and you will be allowed to pass through the final guard tower into the fortress of Narzod itself. Upon entering, you will find yourself face to face with the Mystic Hurler, a creature so evil that even Narzod himself trembles in fear. The Mystic Hurler will aim an unlimited number of spikers directly at your hovercraft and on either side of you to ensure that you will not progress any further. The spikers will split in half when hit by your blaster. In order to destroy the Mystic Hurler, you must hit it with your blaster six times. Hovercraft, you are provided with six hovercrafts for each game and unlimited ammunition. One extra hovercraft will be earned each time you destroy the Mystic Hurler. The number of remaining hovercrafts is displayed at the lower right hand side of the screen. Direct hits, your hovercraft will be destroyed whenever you come into contact with one of the Guardians, one of the Guardian, Guardian's Spikers, one of the Warbirds, one of the Warbirds' Bullets, bullets from your own blaster that have ricocheted off the roadway's walls. When you're hit, you will return to the same roadway level to face those guardians you have not yet destroyed. The guardians, the guardians of the fortress of Narzod are illustrated on page 2. They are all under the spell of the evil wizard, and their only goal is to destroy any unwanted visitors to the fortress. They will move back and forth randomly across the roadway, as they approach your hovercraft. Each guardian can hurl one spiker. These may be thrown up at any time and at any downward angle. When you reach the middle and upper roadways, the guardian's spike spikers will split into two, doubling the danger. The guardians become easier to destroy as they come closer to your hovercraft. The farther they are up the roadway, the more shots you will have to fire to eliminate them. And a scoring... Points are awarded for blasting guardians on the roadways as follows. Doom Grabber 10 points, Tarantula 10 points, Ghoul 10 points, Warbird 100 points, Mystic Hunter 10 and a bonus hovercraft. A standard Spiker is 50 points and a Split Spiker is 100. High score memory. As long as your machine is on the Fortress of Narzod cassette in place, the high score is retained. To see the score, press the reset button. When the machine is turned off and the cassette removed, the score is lost. And finally, restarting the game. To restart play after a completed game with the same number of players, simply push any of the buttons on the control panel. 
to restart the game before it's completed or to change the number of players press the reset button. Right, let's just zoom back out again. I think this now goes on to... Yeah, there we go. I'm not even going to attempt to read any French. We've got French. I don't even know the different... There's German as well. But you see, it's actually in, it's in not bad condition. That was lost in the bottom corner. But yeah. There we go. There's some disgusting stuff stuck to the front of that. It's probably like 19, 1982 pot noodles, something like that. So anyway, let's fire this bad boy up and see how we go. Right, okay, apologies about the, uh, the, kind of, the pretty naff uh, screen kind of picture. It's really, really difficult to get this to look okay because the uh, my phone camera, it just makes everything look far too bright. But I noticed I've got a, a mode on the phone called Professional and you can actually change, is it the ISO? So it's kind of made it not look quite so kind of... Uh, bright looking but like I said it's not the greatest but hopefully it'll give you an idea of just how the game's going to play so let me turn the sound up so right how do we start let me just reset it press the button nineteen eighty three uh, so two player that's level two level three let's just stick with nice and easy I think Game three, yeah, okay, and start to start. Right, so I can move up, down, left, and right now. If I go to try and. Can I crash? Oh, no, I can't actually. So I need to be very careful I don't kill myself, right? So I can now go up to the top, or maybe not. <laughs> so it's kind of pseudo 3D, you know. Uh, the the further up the ah, oh, the further up the screen I get, the smaller I get. All of a sudden, getting further away. I'm going to wait until I've killed them all before I can progress, possibly. Quick! I can't actually go any further. So these are ghouls, I think. These little guys here. Ah, bugger! But these games just look awesome, they really do with a nice vector screen. <laughs> you twat. I've got to say, the overlay in this game isn't, it's not really, it's all kind of yellow. The only different, I don't know if it's actually coming across in the video, the only different coloured bit that isn't yellow is the, uh, the score, which is blue. Will we ever get to see level 2? Who knows? There's the grabbers. I'll just let him disappear off the screen. Is he coming back up? Oh, is he going to disappear? There's a can granny. Ah, what I'm going to have to do now is kill him by ricocheting bullets, I think. Ooh. He is moving up slightly. How did I miss him? <laughs> now, I've just noticed that on this, uh, on the video, you'll see the lines kind of pulsating, like, almost like a strobe effect. It doesn't do that on the Vectrex, it's only in the camera, so there's obviously, the camera doesn't really get on very well with the Vectrex. 
The Vector X is one system that I've never really been able to, uh, I've never seen a decent emulator for it. But the best emulator I've actually seen was the one that I did uh, a look at last week. The uh, Vectrex thing on the, uh, the iPad. That was probably the most realistic, passable Vectrex emulator I've actually seen. Right, you may pass, there we go. There's his bird things. Right, why is he just stopped? Ah, oh, bugger. Let's go for one more go, I think. Ah, bugger. Ah, it's actually... <laughs> it's auto fire. I've just noticed that. Careful here. One thing about the Vectrex, it has not aged at all. The games still look as glorious as they did. Can we pass? No, we can't pass. Yeah, they still look as glorious as they did back in 1983. I remember seeing the Vectrex in a shop, and I didn't really quite know what it was. I mean, the shop that I saw it in had the Atari 2600, and it also had the ColecoVision. And... It just looked, it looked odd. I didn't really fully understand what the Vectrex was. I never realised that back then, you know, 30 years on, it would become probably one of the most collectible, desirable game in Oh, right, you may pass. Let's, how many lives have we got? I think we're in the last life. I think we are. Shoot bullets and then run. Am I going to die if I hit these? Oh no, I don't. Ah, right, I've got you, right, so you can actually use their sort of dead carcasses as a shield. Anyway, that is actually pretty good fun, that is Fortress of Narzod. So anyway guys, that is it. I'm going to do, let me know what you think of this video. Uh, like I said, apologies about the appalling uh, screen can you capture for the game itself. Um, let me know if you think they're any good. I will plan to do one of these every couple of weeks, possibly. Um, I've got about I don't know, I've got about a dozen Vectrex games, but I think it's nicest to kind of show off the box and whatnot. So, anyway guys, as usual, if you like the video, please think of liking it. If you've not subscribed to the channel, please think of hitting that great big fat subscribe button. Um, and as usual, thank you very much for watching.